On this episode of Mudhole TV, we find the team in the legendary sport fishing destination, Stewart, Florida, a hidden gem on South Florida's Treasure Coast. With over 800 species of fish, the most biodiverse estuary in the Northern Hemisphere means bringing perfectly dialed in equipment. Will our custom built rods from MHX and CRB be able to handle everything this fishery can throw at them? We're in Stewart, Florida this week with a whole bunch of fishing enthusiasts and rod builders. We're here to bring rod building to the masses by teaching people how to build fishing rods and then go out and how to catch the fish. You're going to be able to follow us building an application specific rod and then go out and catch that and target that species in the ocean. Mudhole TV is brought to you by Mudhole Custom Tackle, the world's largest supplier of custom rod building. Build your next custom fishing rod at mudhole.com slash TV. So yesterday we were out fishing and probably 70 feet of water bottom fishing for a variety of anything that really was around using cut squid and Spanish sardines for bait. And really caught quite a mixed bag of everything. Ladyfish, caught a blue runner, caught a bluefish, caught a triggerfish, uh, reef runners. And then finally I set the hook on something that I thought was the bottom and fought it, but the boat was drifting, so you couldn't quite tell if you're on the bottom or it was a really big fish. So when that rod went off, Tom immediately put his hand on that line to stop that reel. You know, it was just tearing line off. That was real light tackle, so, you know, I didn't want to risk him breaking it off right away. We gave it some line, and man, I, I thought that fish took us straight to the rocks. Once we got its head turned, though, it was literally like winching a car off the bottom of the ocean. I was afraid it was a big grouper and it was going to go into a rock, being from up north in Port Canaveral where we have a lot of big ledges and rocks. Down here, someone said, no, it's mostly a sand bottom. You don't have to worry about letting the fish run. So I let, the, let it go a little bit and it still didn't move. You want the uh, little fishing thing? There you go. Then you got them turned real. It's not moving up. We're fishing a seven foot, 20 to 30 pound rod um, that was bent over pretty hard. And I had to put my hand on the reel to stop the drag from coming out. The fish kept going. It's definitely fish. Oh, uh, yeah? There it is. I finally started the boat up and started doing circles around the fish to try to pull it off the bottom because it basically had sounded at that point. We thought it was a big grouper or a snapper that either possibly got into a rock that shouldn't have been there, but we just couldn't pull it off the bottom. Fought it probably for a good 40 minutes or so trying to get it up. I couldn't see it. Finally handed the rod off to, to Brooke who took the rod. <laughs> Uh. Fought it up to the surface and even he couldn't believe it just felt like a tire on the end of the thing. It just wasn't moving. Occasionally it would move. So Tom fought that fish for probably, I don't know, three or four pulls from the bottom all the way up to probably 20, 30 feet from the boat and that thing just would not stop. You know, we built that rod for mutton snapper fishing. You know, it, it's light duty. We had light tackle on it, 25 pound leader, just a small light wire circle hook. You know, it just would not give an inch. That's a big shark. Finally, Brooke was able to get it up and we could see the silhouette of a very large shark sitting down there, which is surprising because we were fishing, or I was fishing just a small circle hook with a 20, 25 pound fluorocarbon leader, about four or five feet a leader hooked up to some braid. I gotta say, I'm pretty impressed with this SW70. 
MHX rod, man. That's a big bull shark. We're using light line, 25 pound leader. Just like reeling in a Cadillac. And how I could fight a shark, or Brooke and I both fought the shark for probably close to an hour. Uh, finally got it up to the boat. We thought it was a bull shark. It turned out to be a big lemon shark. And uh, it, was, it was a lot of fun. It was crazy to feel the absolute power of that shark. But, you know, eventually the rod won. You know, we, even with all that light tackle, we, we used the boat, we used the gear that we built, and we're able to get that beast off the bottom and up to the side of the boat. Mudhole TV is brought to you by MHX Rod Blanks, the benchmark for rod blank quality and performance. Browse over 500 of the world's best blanks at mudhole.com slash TV. Hey guys, we're down here in Stewart, Florida, heading out for another beautiful day on the water, see what we can't uh, pull off the bottom. Uh, Chris, you wanna tell us where we're heading? Yeah, we're gonna run down the beach a little bit and catch some bait first using the sabiki rigs. And you know, every so often down the beach, they'll be potted up. So of course, you know, we'll catch bait, but we also might pull a fish out of there as well. We're gonna keep running north up to the power plant. They call it the boils. And that's where they pump in cooling water and then pump it back out into the ocean. And it actually looks like it's boiling out of the water. So sounds like we were gonna uh, fill a fish box today. Huh? I hope so, I hope so. <laughs> you know, when we woke up this morning, the weather was perfect. I mean, it's flat, calm, South Florida. We had the sabiki rigs tied up take the boats, we're gonna run down the beach. So here in Stewart, you know, it's it's very live bait centered, right? So whether you're bottom fishing, whether you're looking for sailfish, whether you're looking for dolphin, uh, you can troll, but I always love to have live bait on board. So we headed out this morning, headed a little north along the beach looking for bait, and lo and behold, there they were, about 100, 100 125 yards of just bait. So, we did come out of the inlet and go north, and most of the time you're running right along the beach and you're looking for pelicans and you look for other birds. And of course, because it was flat today, we were able to see that it was just the flickers, right? So you can see them far off and you just run right up to them. You start pitching the sabikis out and you can feel that rod just load up. And you know, I, I love using a fairly light rod. It, it's not gonna be a rod that you're gonna catch a dolphin on most of the time. It's gonna be a rod that I wanna one out sinker on so you don't just plunge right through that whole bait pod. You know, you want them to get on there, load it up. Chris was out there pitching it out there, pulling up three, four baits at a time. We filled the well within like three, four, five casts and we had three or four dozen. Oh yeah, there they are. Throw right into the middle of the pod, and that's how you get them right there. I've got this IS blank here with a sabiki rig on it, because these sabiki rigs are only six or eight pound test. We put a one ounce weight on them because you don't want something that's really, really heavy, especially when all the baits out here on the surface, you can see them all just, I mean, it's half of a football field out here right now. And then they just load up. We'll bring them right here. Pull them in, we flip them in the boat, unhook them, we get them right in the well. I mean, this morning in probably, I would say, 20, 25 minutes, pretty short order, uh, we had probably 30 or 45 fish or so, and then it was time to head offshore. Mudhole TV is brought to you by CRB Products, developed exclusively for rod builders by rod builders. Check out their full catalog of equipment at mudhole.com slash TV. So, you know, here in South Florida, we have an absolute array of places that we can run offshore between three to 10 miles. I mean, there's wrecks, there's barges, there's rubble. You know, there's waypoints everywhere. You just gotta pick one and, and go for it, right? So we're gonna head a little further offshore, do a little bit more bottom bouncing. We're gonna head out here to this artificial reef here. It's a bunch of uh, concrete barriers and things like that that uh, the county has put out there. Um, great places to dive, great places to fish, holds a lot of fish, holds a lot of bait. So we're gonna go out there, it's about a five or six mile run, and uh, see what we can pick up. You know, I, I know typically anything that stands 20 to 25 feet off the bottom is gonna have bait around it, and then it's also going to have the fish around it. So 
We started running up on this thing. We started probably, you know, five miles out. And of course, you're, you got a bead on it. And you're running, you're running. And, and as you get closer, you're looking at your graph. And you're like, okay, we're two and a half miles out. Or one and a half miles out. And then you start to see something. So this is all bait sitting over top of a little bit of a structure right there. So uh, good place to wet a line. Hey guys, we moved offshore here. We're probably about six miles out. We're in about 55 foot of water. There's some parking barriers or some railroad kind of gravel and rubble and just piles out here. So we've got a live bait out. We've got some squid out and we're going to probably, you know, maybe a snapper off the bottom, hopefully a grouper, something like that, you know. Uh, but we got the lines out, we're ready to rock, we're set up, and uh, we're gonna catch some fish. You know, you start to see the bait breaking the surface, start to see fish breaking the surface, and of course, I immediately pull a rod out of the, the rocket launcher, grab a bait, pitch a bait out there, and I'm free lining and free lining and, and that line starts picking up, picking up, picking up, picking up, picking up, come tight, and he breaks off. Here, jump it. Oh, come on. Oh. Uh. Uh. <laughs> so of course he breaks off and as soon as he breaks off i'm standing up high elevated on the nose of that boat and i look over port side probably 30 feet out and there's seven or eight kudas just waiting for me to pitch another bait out oh they're right there look and i'm going uh, okay all right, all right, we got you. So we run back, of course, Scott's on the boat with me. We start scrambling, grab the single strand wire out, and we've got something for it. So we rig the same thing. We put a really short trace of wire. I go back to the well and pitch it out. Keep yep. spinning. I right, keep spinning, yep. And that bait was not in the water for 90 seconds. Got it. Oh, there we go. <laughs> yeah. It was literally the same as before, but now the reel is screaming. And of course, he's taken down, he's running out, and then all of a sudden he's out of the water, probably 12 or 15 feet. Oh. 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 You know, you rarely get a big cuda that skyrockets like that, but I'm telling you, it was it was something else. And you know, he's he's on the surface, he's down, he's around the boat, and of course, we finally get him boat side, and Scott can barely get his hand around his tail to get him lassoed and get him in the boat. Nice cuda, Chris. Yeah. Nice cuda. L904. Inshore rod, taking it offshore. Single strand wire, that's what will happen when you're hung onto a big cuda. We can straighten that out and get another bait back out. Oh! <laughs> Good release. Yeah, baby. All right, I see some <laughs> other ones. Let's get another bait out. So, you know, the rod that I was fighting those cudas on, it probably was not the rod that if I sat down and thought what I wanted to build to catch Big Bear Cuda on, but the rod happened to be in the rod holder with a hook. I grabbed it and pitched a bait out and the rest was history. There he is. Oh. I got him. You know, it, it was that L904, which is, it's a 7.6, it's a medium heavy, it's, it's 10 to 20. And of course, I'm running a 5,000 size reel on it with 20 pound braid. And of course, you know, initially I had 25 fluorocarbon on it, which I had to obviously switch over to the wire. But, you know, when I made that first pitch, I was a little, hesitant when I saw the size of that CUDA, but it pitched the bait so well, and then of course, we know how well it fought. Right there, we can go right in. Oh, I think I got him. There you go, Chris. Mudhole TV is brought to you by Mudhole Custom Tackle, the world's largest supplier of custom rod building. Build your next custom fishing rod at mudhole.com/tv. 
So after seeing Chris get his cooter, right, I'm back there tying on a wire leader going, oh man, this is fantastic. The line's ripping off his reel. Scott's just trying his best to get him into the boat. Nice cooter, Chris. Gets him into the boat. Great, you got the shot. I go over to the live well immediately, put a shiner on. I cast out because they're all around us. Line zipping off, right? Turn the bail over, set the hook. There you go. Oh, great hook. Oh, yep, get that rod tip underneath there. Put that rod tip in the water. Come around the front, come around the front. Go around the front. Go, go, go. Lean way over. There you go. Had him on for like 10 seconds, got off. Oh. Back again, rebaited. Scott positioned the boat around, and they're in the same place. I mean, just no fear, just swarming around, feeding on these bait fish that were over. And so I cast out in front of them, just the water's so clear down here that you can actually see them come up and grab the bait and run with it. Come on, eat him. I can see the bait. See him gone? <laughs> hit it, hit it, hit it. He's on it, he's on it. Eat it, eat it. He's got it in his mouth like a T-bone. So I knew how long he was running, turned the bail over again, set the hook. Gun, lock it up. Set the hook. There you go. <laughs> Jesus. Come on the front. Man, I'm a freshwater guy. I don't get out on salt water a lot. So the size of the fish really impressed me. And just the line screaming off the bow of the rod and everything. <laughs> <laughs> Barely even kicks and he's gone. Six, seven minutes later, we get him to the boat. Scott gets him up. There he is. Hey. You know those MHX rods coming through? And uh You're hooking perfect, perfect, Greg, right in the corner of the mouth. Yeah. That a boy! They Good seem job. to be hitting, so you guys go catch one. Man, uh, a great, great fight. So now the pressure was on for Scott to catch his, to get that trifecta. Mudhole TV is brought to you by CRB Products, developed exclusively for rod builders by rod builders. Check out their full catalog of equipment at mudhole.com slash TV. So we finally get the fish up, pull them out of the water, take some photos, beautiful fish, de-hook them, throw them back in. I'm sitting there, you know, I've been running this boat all day. Everybody's having all this fun but me. So I'm like, Chris, take the wheel. My turn. So Chris is back there wheeling us around trying to find the fish again. I got a live babe standing on the bow. There they are. They're just swarming this school of uh, bait that's probably about 25, 30 feet down. So I take mine, I pitch it down out there. Pull the line off, pull the line off, pull the line off. And I finally, I'm like, all right. Close the bail, set the hook. He skyrockets, game on. God. Yeah. Well, that, didn't, that didn't take very long, just rebait. Toss it back out, how about that? We fought him for a good five, six minutes. Beautiful kuda. You know, it's not the fish that we were out there targeting today, but I can tell you, man, it is fun just bending the rod on the kuda because they are one heck of a fighting fish. How about that? He eats it right at the boat. That's some live action right there. Uh, nothing like it. They got some big, big shoulders on them, and uh, it was a lot of fun today. You know, you can go out fishing, you're not always going to get what you want. So you got to take what, what Mother Nature's given you and what you find. And we happen to have found a big school of Cuda. All of us got hooked up. We all had a great fish, had a great day. Oh man, these rods are awesome. Dude, from Tell sharks me. to Cudas, it's a great, great fish. Telling you. And then jumpers. Uh, you know, it wasn't until uh, the storm started rolling out like they typically do down here in South Florida during the summertime and it ran us off the water. If not, man, we would have caught more food. 
Mudhole TV is brought to you by MHX Rod Blanks, the benchmark for rod blank quality and performance. Browse over 500 of the world's best blanks at mudhole.com slash TV. So, you know, one of the interesting things about building your own rods is uh, you, you have a wide selection on the boat, but she, it, the funny thing that happened, Chris was using an L904 MHX rod, right? I was using an SW70M, which the day before we caught a lemon shark on. So again, it's one of those cases where, you know, you go out thinking you're gonna catch one type of fish and you try your best, but the ocean's a really big place. You don't always have control over what hits the end of your line. And I'm telling you, these MHX rods, they're, they're thinner diameters, they're light, they're made of 100% graphite, the ones we were using. So as an avid inshore angler, my search for a better tool to catch fish led to my journey down the rod building path. The MHX lineup was part of that. We were looking for better blanks that were high performance but economical, but designed specifically for the rod building community. They're specifically built for rod building. They've got tailored things like serial numbers, transferable warranties, application specific needs, and they're a very large line of blanks designed by some of the best fishermen in the world and rod builders. So I don't know about you, but you know, when Team Mudhole rolls out on the boat, we come out with an arsenal. And you know, one of the great things about rod building is just because it's said it's supposed to be used one way or the other, doesn't necessarily mean that's what you gotta do. We had FP936 flipping sticks out there that just crush it as pitch rods. We had L904s offshore. You know, they're not just for snook rods or, you know, inshore stuff. You know, we were catching snapper, amberjack, all sorts of stuff off the bottom. No, the trip so far has been fantastic. We've had great weather, good seas, caught a lot of fish. The rods have held up well. The one thing I'll say about Mudhole that we try to do day in and day out is make rod building available to everybody. We try to build a bigger pie. We're trying to build a bigger rod building community every day. This company and website is backed by hundreds of dedicated individuals with hundreds of hours on the water fishing. We know how to fish, but we also know how to build fishing rods.